It's a beautiful afternoon here in Kensington Gardens in London. It's been one of the hottest days of the year. But in the tent behind me, it is currently eternal winter. The chill is only temporary. Within this tent, a spectacular new theatre adaptation of C.S. Lewis's children's novel The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is being staged. A story in which four children step through into another world and become embroiled in an epic battle between good and evil. So why do it on stage? And now? When I was approached about doing Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, the coincidence was that I was literally at that moment reading it to my son and... Um, you know, remembering, you know, it was the first book I think I ever read on my own and remembering the experience of reading, actually, for the first time, which, although the literary activity is very different to the theatrical one, it is the beginning, I suppose, of an incipient imagination. And um, I was sort of very touched by kind of revisiting it myself. And I remember that very powerful experience you have as a child watching Theatre in the Round. And uh, the whole idea of the tent really appealed to me as well. The difficulty that's compounded when you're not in a theatre. <laughs> you're in a field and it's been raining. I mean, lovely sunshine now, but it rained for the first three weeks of our technical rehearsal. Thought we were going to slide away. The evacuation of British children is going on smoothly and efficiently. Anyone expecting chirpy family entertainment, though, should probably book for something else. Through puppetry, video projections and aerial acrobatics, Gould and his creative team foreground the story's wartime setting and bring out its shadowy and sinister sides. Unlike some previous versions, this is a rougher take on The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe, something more elemental. I didn't want the story to be somehow a kind of middle-class period drama experience, not because I don't, you know, I feel all culture should be sort of Blairitely diverse, but because I, I felt that what Lewis had written was a story about his own temporal moment in the war and also children of his own generation and, and, and possibly that had become a bit sort of classic serialised uh, in our cultural imagination. Inevitably it's not going to be what a lot of people envisage um, but as I, as I say you know that you have all these disparate sort of mythologies that, that Lewis employs uh, and the, the main challenge was to try and unite all of those together and find a, 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 a real heritage and roots to the story, a kind of um, tribal world that is both British and Inuit and Maori and Scandinavian, and, um, where centaurs and, and foxes can chill out together. It becomes increasingly strange. You start with recognisable British pastoral sort of things, but you also have Mr Tumnus at the same time. and, and and then you meet a centaur and griffins and phoenixes, and it just sort of quite quickly unravels into a um, into a very strange sort of medley of creatures until you obviously hit Aslan, which is just another strange thing to throw into the mix. Rise up, Sir Peter Wolfsbane. You've got puppetry thrown in there. You've got stop motion video work going on. You've got circus elements with people using bungee and stilts. So it's a it's it's a it's a it's a theatrical hodgepodge in a in an environment that is both tent, both arena, both and theatre all at the same time. We were watching last night and said, God, this is dark, isn't it? I mean, actually, it's a, it is a narrative like Lord of the Rings that is born out of the Second World War that doesn't have a huge amount of jokes in compared to Matilda or you know Panto. Uh, you know, in many ways, we've tried to make it like a Jason Bourne film to a certain extent to try and make it a quest narrative that is you know difficult. But I think that's in the book. The three of us were quite intent that we shouldn't shy away from the, the elemental, the, 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 the rough edges of the story and the darkness that it has because despite what people say, kids can handle that and actually kids love that. It's a complex book you know, and, and therefore we have to present it for children with that richness and that complexity without trying to dumb it down or, or simplify it. Those four children have to sort of go through a struggle in order for the audience to believe that they've earned the rites of passage, it's the age-old quest narrative. Vulnerables enter a world which tests them, which transforms them, so that they move out from that world. By the time you leave, the show is in the sunshine. 